we tend not to want to become aware unless more or less we are in discomfort that something is not working we are we are getting fired over and over we keep going into the same bad relationships we are doing things that are uh, becoming obvious that are not working. And then we start asking questions. And that's when we start on the road of awareness. Part of the reason awareness cannot easily be translated into action is because we leave it at the cognitive level. Actually, we have to embrace the sensations and emotions that come up with the reflections, which is why it's so hard to do it alone because- Hello, Marianne, good morning. Hello, hello, Yair, good to see you. Great to see you. I'm honored to have you here on the show. Thank you very much for your time. I know you have a lot on your plate, so I really appreciate your time. And that is why we'll dive into a topic that, you know, I think it's so important. And I'll explain in a really simple way why. Because we all okay. talk about awareness today and how awareness is important and being aware of something and all. Like awareness is probably one of the main keywords in Google. But being aware of something is one thing. <laughs> Actually, taking the action to do a change in life is a whole different thing. And you work with so many people, and I, I know from firsthand that you hope many people really change their life. Uh, you know, you're also spent, as a doctor, also with women, but not only women, with so many people, you really hope them change their life. And when you change your life, that means you take action. You don't only just stay aware. Uh, so I, I would love to hear from you first, maybe before the taking action part, First, getting aware, because I do think being aware of something is important. How, how do how are we aware when there's a certain situation that requires our awareness, a certain problem or a certain challenge? How do we get aware of it? And then we'll talk about the other part. Great. Um, so the most, uh, you know, again, um, this is all just from my observing, you know, people that I deal with. It might be other stuff out there. This is purely from my personal clinical experience. And I feel comfortable going there because my role model in uh, understanding human behavior is Carl Jung. Uh, I don't know if you know who he is, but yeah. he was at the turn of the century, uh, first affiliated with, with Freud. And then he separated out from Freud because he had a different way of understanding human behavior. He felt Freud was too reductionistic that everything was the Oedipal complex and he felt it was much more you know uh basically broad and deep how we act in the world so he has some very uh a deep way of understanding human behavior and one of the things that um uh, i liked about him is that he would say and gives me freedom there were two things that really besides loving everything he has to say but two things that gave me freedom to be who I am in my interaction with people. The first thing is you cannot help everybody. This is a man who was world renowned. And when he wrote his autobiography before his death at the age of 86, he said, I was able to help a third of the people. I was able to help more or less another third. And I wasn't able to help at all another third. So as somebody who does healing, whether it's in the allopathic or alternative ways, to know that they're going to be a third of the people, I won't be able to help, not to take it personally, that there's something wrong in my methodology or understanding, but just to say some people are either not ready, and this is again coming back from awareness to action, just people are ready to be aware but not to do the action. And the other reason is some people are so what we call protected in their system, so afraid of action that they would rather keep repeating the same self-defeating process than to make the awareness into an action. So that was very liberating, that, that, that basically, no matter how smart I might sound or know or try to help them, it's just not going to help. And it's okay. People will wait, wake up when they are ready. Yeah, nice. I, yeah. I really like so, that. It's also humbling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the second thing that that uh he said was, well, he has so many things, so I'm gonna just keep spouting forth some. And the second thing is that awareness is what you can do in therapy. 
That's your first step. And why do you become aware as you ask? Because life forces you, pushes you against the wall in pain. And you start asking questions. The most common time to ask the questions, to want to become aware is midlife. And he's at midlife anywhere from 35 on to you know 55 or 65. So we tend not to want to become aware unless more or less we are in discomfort, that something is not working. We are, we are getting fired over and over. We keep going into the same bad relationships. We are doing things that are uh, becoming obvious that are not working. And then we start asking questions. And that's when we start on the road of awareness. Wow. Uh, I really connect to what you said. Well, I don't think there's anyone in life that doesn't have those challenges along their along their path. So from what you're saying, awareness is something that will come at this point or that point along the path. Uh, and it would happen to everyone. And I think that's, I think it's beautiful when people actually do the work, whether it's because they want to do it or, or because they have to do it. And also then they want to do it. Uh, you know, so I think a lot of times in general, as human beings, we only do something when we get pushed against the wall. I was just talking with a friend and also myself, but I was talking with him. He had some serious pain. And so I was trying to give him some exercises to, to help reduce the pain, his back pain. And he's like, no, no, I'll, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. You know what? I'll, I'll just, I'll, I, just, I just, I don't want to do the exercise. I don't listen to my dear friend. Otherwise, either your back will force you to do it in in a, in a month or two because you won't be able to move, or maybe try to do it now. <laughs> but over there, he over there he has to to do that. Well, eventually, he'll have to take that action because otherwise he won't be able to get out of bed. But there are many things in life that we know we need to do them. So we get to that awareness, like to that awareness. We know we need to do A, B, C, D. Uh, but sometimes that knowing just states is something we know, but we don't actually do it. Uh, or we start and then yeah. we stop. So, <clears throat> so, you know, again, and this is gonna, you know, not where I want to ultimately go, but being a person of faith, I will have to introduce this topic, but uh, he, he basically felt that when we come into patterns that we find is not working anymore, that doesn't necessarily will get us where we need to go. So the first thing is to get a therapist of some kind to help you with that awareness. What is the awareness, the meaning of that awareness? Because it's very hard to do it alone. So there, the self-help industry uh, has billion dollars worth of books it publishes, how to, whatever. And we think that's gonna be enough. Oh, now I'm aware I do this pattern and that's enough. Actually, it's not. What needs to be uncovered is where do those patterns come from? And that's the job of psychology. However, the action part is our job. Psychology cannot do action. So when we become aware enough and we say, okay, you know, the definition of, of insanity is doing the same things over and over and expecting a different outcome. So once we realize that we need to understand more deeply what is driving our behavior so we can heal it, then we have to do the avoda. We have to do every day implementing the awareness into action. Oh, that, that's it's something that I'm sure many people theoretically think they know uh, that they need to do it. Because uh, like you said, uh, we do that awareness, whether it's with a therapist or like a different <clears throat> type of therapist. But what I want what, what, what I want to know is how do you actually do that? Because I'm saying uh, there are people that are aware for something for, for many years and they don't actually take the action steps. So how do we do that? And how, how do we persist? You know, we spoke off camera before about technology that we need to persist and be patient. So, you know, if we want to learn it. So how, how do we do the same thing over here when we are aware of something? How are we actually moving to that action phase, number one, and then also being persistent with it? So the first question to keep asking, what's keeping me from doing the action? And I'll simply tell you, you really don't want to do it. That's why. So for that, um, what has helped me a great deal personally and with my clients is 
the internal family systems model, which is based on uh, and it's consistent with the Jungian concept, not necessarily with modern psychology, which is cognitive behavioral model, which means all it is is you, and this is what you think is you, and what you do is you. In this model, it, it embraces the concept of multiplicity of mind, and Jung called it complexes, that we develop complexes as we grow into the world or in the internal family model, you would call them parts, parts that are there to help us navigate the world. And they come into being when we don't have a guidance system, we don't understand it. And we come to some beliefs and conclusions, how to navigate the world that's so big and frightening as we are children, and how to protect ourselves. So most of our behaviors that are not positive, our protective behaviors of our younger energetic system that couldn't find answers and came up with his, his own answers and conclusions and beliefs, which in the internal family models ends up being burdens. We carry those beliefs as a burden to our system. And the system is what? The system is the soul or what they call the self that we are born with, that's whole and perfect. And what happens to it, it gets smudged by our protective or ego need to survive. And the journey is to understand that those ego needs to survive our protective systems and embrace them with kindness. Oh, I yelled at my wife. I really didn't want to. Awareness, I yelled at my wife instead of saying she was the one that caused me the problem. The second thing is, oh, I yelled at her. What was triggered in me that made me yell at her? So that's awareness. And then the action, and that comes through the therapy, you realize that you were triggered. And it's usually some kind of an early protective way against maybe a parent who questioned you, who yelled at you, who not knowingly and not willfully, just because life is that way. It happens. You know, you come home from school with your A report card showed to your parent and they're busy on the phone trying to manage uh, work or manage other siblings. And you think it has to do that you're just not enough. And then you try for A plus. And then you become this pleaser and this person that becomes um, a caretaker. So once you realize that it's you, like every time you want to point a finger there, you start seeing the three fingers pointing back at you, then that awareness can slowly get into healing and into action. Oh, I yelled at my wife. I got triggered. What was the trigger? My mom used to yell or que question me the same way she did. It's my work to heal that has nothing to do with her thinking that I'm inadequate. And that has to be done on a daily basis, affirming that you're not inadequate, affirming that you're whole and perfect, and that your behavior that shows up imperfectly, it was created by your beingness to protect you. So if you have that model, it's easier to put awareness into action. Yeah, I understand that there's a, I think there's a book, I forgot the name of uh, Dr. Schwartz, right? No, no Bad Parts. Yeah, there are yeah, No Bad yeah. Parts, yeah. yeah it's, not, I yeah. really highly recommend it, yeah. Yeah, I, I also, I I, uh, I listened to some of it. And what, based on what you're saying, it sounds like someone, like you, you have to do it with someone because I think getting alone to that, understanding what was that time in life that, our you know that our mind our soul kind of bought that reaction and to protect us but yeah. now it's time in life to change that meaning uh, i don't know getting there alone so sounds almost impossible it sounds like we need some type of uh, a yeah. direct direction from from outside a hundred percent but it's not permanent that's the beauty of it that it's a self-healing model ultimately so once you get the steps you need to take you know you can oh 
what, you know, and, and it's very somatic, which is very helpful because you cannot, part of the reason awareness cannot easily be translated into action is because we leave it at the cognitive level. Actually, we have to embrace the sensations and emotions that come up with the reflections, which is why it's so hard to do it alone because we need somebody who is there to support us that you are okay. Because we, it's very hard when we don't have, and the word is critical mass of self-awareness, critical mass of self-energy. It's very hard to do this work. But over time, you get a critical mass of self-energy. And then you can say, oh, okay, I get it. I yelled at my kids because something in me got triggered. That somehow the, the way they behave, I'm going to look like I'm a bad parent. Hmm. And bring everything home. And the word is U-turn. Everything where you are roiled in some ways, do a U-turn and see what got triggered in you. Every time you decide on something and you don't do, do a U-turn. What blocked me from doing it? Which part was afraid of taking an action step? And the most comments are exposure to failure. Oh, if I do this, I'm exposing myself for possible failure. And the part says, no, 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 we are not taking that chance. We're going to keep you, what? Do what? Procrastinate which is a very common way of avoiding action. Because the experience and, from the past that, that we failed, so now it's not to procrastinate. Hi, I hope this video is serving you. I just want to share with you that my belief in life is that you are here to serve a purpose greater than yourself. But in order to do that the best way, you must start with investing in yourself. Enjoy the rest of the video. Well, it sounds like, you know, so it, it, many times it's, from what you're saying, it's things that are like in the subconscious. So like if all, this all of it, all, all our quote unquote negative behaviors. And sometimes we can overcompensate with positive behaviors. And I'm going to elucidate on that are really a protective system. We call the eggs. Actually, what we call in the unconscious is the exile. We ex exile those feelings that are too painful to bear. The, the the abandonment sense, the aloneness, the worthlessness, the shame. We have to push that away because it's too painful for the ego to experience that. So what happens is that we then create a whole set of protection for the exile. Behaviors that make sure that you never ever, and that is the word that part uses, experience shame again. We'd rather not have you go out there and be the um, creative artist your soul is pushing you to be because your ego has the memory and the fear of failure. That sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> uh, it, it sounds like a lot of work and I think anything worthwhile in life has that we want to actually appreciate has work in it. And what I want to understand from what you're saying is that like do, does someone when let's say we change that meaning to whatever it is that you know that prevented us from moving forward so uh back you know in our childhood so we decide a certain decision based on something and now we're coming back and we're changing kind of the picture we're reframing it do people and i i think it's it's not only the reframing i'm going back to actually that there's someone like in order to take action reframing is maybe step number one but number two is actually someone holding you accountable and ho hoping you go through and, and and that's a therapist, but is there is there a way uh, that you that you could say okay, well, this is only good for people to know how to uh, go into imagination and all that? Because I'm sure some people are telling themselves right now, well, I, I hardly remember what's going like back in and what went what, what went back in my days. How am I supposed to remember what happened 20 years ago, 30, 50? I don't know, maybe even sometimes 60 years ago. Like some some good some people will say, you know, I have no clue how to. Uh, visualize and all like or imagine like how do you actually go back there is that something that is only for some people or like how, how do you actually do it oh uh, that's a very good question um and um the way to to look at is actually there's a book written by a harvard um psychiatrist a neuroscientist called the body keeps the score mm -hmm. the mind forgets but the body doesn't all our memories are stored in our cellular memory. 
And when given a chance to connect through our body, we actually come up with the memories that are absolutely surprising. So it doesn't have, it just what it requires, which is the difficult part is courage. And Jung said, you need moral, and that's the action. You need a moral fortitude. You have to have a belief system that will not give you the option to back out. And for me, it's our, our Jewish belief system. If we want to connect to HaKodesh Baruch Hu, we cannot do it just from the ego perspective. The davening is wonderful, but it will not get us to that soul vibrational connection that comes when we know ourselves. And the, and the compelling reason to do this is self-love. If we don't love ourselves, how could we have a loving relationship to HaKodesh Baruch Hu? So for me, this is a spiritual journey. And helping people is a spiritual journey to, to awaken to our soul's presence because the soul is there whether we are aware of it or not. And it's going to do what it needs to do. But it's so much more rewarding when we have a dialogue with it, when we co-create with it and say, oh, okay, I get, I get what you're trying to say. I'm being not aligned with what my knowing is. So what can I do? And it'll, 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 it'll guide you. We, we came here, you know, the, the question, you know, I always ask uh, of people, do you think you are a human being on a spiritual journey or a spiritual being on a human journey? Because if you are a spiritual being on a human journey, then you have to put the ego part that is so fragile and so in need to think that it is God in its right perspective and place and allow the shining forth of our innate um, impulse towards wholeness. So actually we spend a lot of time blocking that. If we had that energy available for what we came here to do and we all came here like our in our fingerprint with our unique individual way of expressing Hakurus Boroko in this world, and take that job seriously, I don't think that anybody should not want to be in therapy to make that happen. Yeah, I understand that. And uh, whoever doesn't understand those words, that means basically God. And I think it's for, for any person of faith, uh, you know, we're Jewish, but it doesn't matter, I think, what type of faith. I think that, you know, having faith is, it is it hopes to get through so much uh, i forgot who said that it's like uh, it's like drugs like it hopes to get through so much not only get through the challenge but also see all the beauty because uh we're connected to a purpose that is much greater than ourselves yes. uh and i think that's really beautiful you know this whole channel speaks about investing in ourselves but not because we're the main like we're, we're now in the, in, the, in the middle of the picture we're investing in ourselves that way we could see the beauty that is in ourselves and then serve a purpose that is greater than ourselves uh yeah. so I, I really connect to that i think also wayne dyer says uh has that saying that uh, we're a spiritual being having a human experience uh he mentions that and what i want to understand because but you know it's important if this is where some of the self-help um books for me are can be dangerous because it engenders a lot of shame well i just read that how come i'm not getting that because it's not just getting it here. It's truly translating it into a personalized somatic experience of what it is to be a spiritual being. You cannot just get it and then you keep reading the next book. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. And it still doesn't translate. So what happens over time? How come I'm reading all of this? And I'm aware of all of this and I'm, I'm not doing it. It must be something wrong with me. I'm just not getting something. And it's not that. That is just the very first step in, a, in an indirect way to get to know yourself. But it's indirect because it's based on somebody else's journey. So you cannot copy and paste somebody's awakening to your awakening. For sure. And like, and like, you know, they say you can teach information, but you cannot teach wisdom. Wisdom is something that we 
gain through our own life experience that we courageously and confidently and with curiosity take on to say, wow, who is this me? I'd like to know better so I can be more fully self-expressed. That takes tremendous amount of self-love to say, you know, I'm worth investing in myself to know who I am and what are the patterns in my life that are not working and do something about it. Yeah. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to understand, like, I'm, I'm still having, like, a part that doesn't really connect to me. Like, I do think that all the self whole books, all, all, everything is great. And from each person, we can learn something. My grandmother always tells me, you know, from, from everyone you learn, from some you learn what to do, and from some you learn what not to do. And I think that the, the, the therapist is the kind of the, the connection that also helps us to actually connect to what is individual for us, what's unique for us. What I'm trying to understand is what happens because some people already don't want to, or it's too expensive for them. I don't know what, but to go to therapy all life. So a- after we do that, re- it's not re- the whole life. Why? I didn't say the whole life. That's what I'm asking. H- how do we keep on taking action after we do that reframing? Uh, and now, okay, so I understand that we, we gave it a different meaning to that, whatever happened in, in the childhood. And so, for example, you'll be accountable at the beginning, but h- how do we keep on actually keep on moving forward? Do we still like, do it does moving forward mean having always someone hold us accountable, a therapist or something like that? No, not at all. I don't believe in accountability. Accountability externally is meaningless. If you are a coach, you should know that. People will, there's a part of them that shows up that wants change and another part that totally blocks it because it's not about accountability. It's about really self-love. And how do I get to that place? Because if you honor yourself, Mm -hmm. you will never do things that would be not to your ultimate benefit. But I mentioned to you, the awareness is that when you get triggered, and you know that somatically, to hold yourself accountable to understand what is it that got triggered in you, and then calm that part of you that felt threatened, and saying there's nothing threatening here. I am here as a human being that's whole and and loving, and I need not bringing parts that are so afraid and frightened that just got triggered. Okay, so if if we got to that to that like I'm I'm still struggling. To that. So w- when we get to the self love phase, you think that would be enough in order for us to keep on doing whatever it is that we need to do in life? Yeah, is this you know the kind of is this behavior bringing me closer to Hashem or further from Hashem? It would be very simple. Is yelling at my wife, um, storming out of a meeting? Is this bringing me closer to my relationship? to Hashem or further. I mean, that would be just a very simple test. And the other part is, what is it in me that's reluctant to take the next step? Bring it home. Oh, I'm afraid that change I'll have to do. I'm afraid of the work that I'll have to do. I'm afraid of all the implications in my life that will have to take place. Yeah, all of that, but that's all ego. It's like I... You know, um, I recently, you know, as you know, made Aliyah with my husband and people keep asking, and how are you doing? I said, my ego is suffering, kicking and screaming because it's not aligned in the way it understands the world or would like to understand the world. And my soul, my soul is dancing, being in Israel, being in the Holy Land, going to the Kotel. So to know, to have that awareness that when you are bent out of shape, that's not the whole of you. Honor it, I'm bent out of shape. What is being bent out of shape? Bring it home and with increasing self-awareness, oh, you're scared. What are you scared of? What are you scared of? And it's probably 90% of our response in the world is out of fear. You know, that famous saying you know you want to be in fear or in love you know those are the two options I think it's it's simplified but if you do work you realize it's really the child that didn't have the appropriate support that it needed in its own understanding of the world that started to take care of himself or herself and came to the conclusion 
It's a scary world. I better figure out. And that scary world doesn't leave until you feel you have been adequately healed from those beliefs because now you have the resources. You see, that's what it is. In those years, we didn't have the resources to take care of ourselves when the external environment didn't support us. But now we do. And the way we do is we remember or reflect, look how far you have come. Look how much you have accomplished. You are not that, you know, helpless, scared little child that had no support. You can trust me, the adult who has accomplished so much to help you along and let go of those fearful beliefs. And it's a process. It's not overnight. It's cultivating the relationship. And that's part of the avoda the first part of the avoda yeah. is to be aware in the moment and the second part is to continue to be aware it's not one oh i got this no 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 it's continually bringing it home beautiful Be beautiful said and i also connect and also interesting it's a kind of connection also interesting thoughts about what you said about that accountability accountability part uh because you know if we just have someone holding us accountable, which is like a big word today. And I actually, I do believe in accountability, but maybe it's phase number two, like after we do that inner work, because if there's no inner work inside, so. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> then you'll find, you'll find then you won't need the accountability because you yourself would not want to do anything that would be, undermine the decision you made that came from a more balanced, clear place. Right. You would not yeah. let the fear undermine that. That's why you ultimately don't need somebody to keep you accountable, which, oh. you know, to, uh, you know, I think we, ch you know, chatted about this before I came to this through coaching. I thought that coaching was the cat's meow until I found out that people were not doing what they were supposed to do. They would show up and after a while drop off. And right. I, I needed to know why, why? Why can't when people come so enthused and so interested and so miserable and all of that? And I said, okay, I'll help you. I'll keep you accountable. They'd rather not show up than listen to your reprimanding them because it works for a while. It's the child that needs reprimanding when they have to be held accountable because they should be able to be accountable on their own. Yeah. I, I think that uh, that accountability kind of shifts. So maybe the beginning will be someone holding us accountable, but then there is accountability, but it's not, that's how I see it. It's not from someone from the outside. You hope them go in that inner work and what's holding us account accountable is a uh, purpose that is greater than our souls. It's God. It's the mission that we, that, you know, that we think that our soul is here to do. And that it's not, it's not anyone else. It has to do with else. It's our purpose to be here. And that yeah. that's what hold, is holding us account accountable. But yeah. sometimes we need that, that person to hold us accountable to go to therapy and to start that process or in the therapy and things like that. You have much more experience than me. Uh, so I, I, I really love how, how you connected those two dots. That, that, that's, it's, it's really beautiful. And uh, I want to ask you a question. How can people reach you? Because I know, you know, that you do beautiful work and you really help people, you know, find that inner beauty in them that would afterwards yeah. help them, uh, you know, be accountable and see the beauty that's in themselves. So is there a way that, that people can reach you? Um, yes and no, I'm fully booked at the moment. <laughs> and also I'm a little bit um, picky. I only take people who are like 35 and over, mm -hmm. even though there's a lot of enthusiasm in, from the younger people wanting like careers and other things. And maybe for that quote unquote accountability might work better. I don't know, but I have found that people don't ask life, uh, affirming and informing questions until they come to a certain age. And this comes from my uh, Jungian uh, beliefs, you know, that we have stages in life. And it's very hard to inform somebody who is at a different stage of something else. So his view is that when we are in 20s, we are in what he called the athlete phase where we are much more concerned how we show up for the world, what the world wants from us, especially in terms of looks. And you can get stuck there. And Hollywood is a perfect example how you can get stuck in the athlete page, where it's all about appearances. 
The next stage is the stage of the hero where you settle in life, you get married, you find a house, home, you have a job. And it, it, it's basically age appropriate. So to have people come and do soul searching at that age is not totally appropriate. They need to first express themselves that way. But when you find that at 45, you are stuck, that means, you know, like people on Wall Street, you cannot get over that hero's part. And the next stage is what he calls is the statement when you have accomplished all that you wanted to accomplish and now you want to give back. And the final phase is the phase of the mystic where you realize that life is a journey and who you are in essence is what needs to be cultivated. And you cannot, quote unquote, in your mystic phase, talk to somebody who's in their athlete phase. Oh, you need to be more spiritual. Oh, you really need to, you know, read more. No, no, no. no. They should be doing what they are doing. So this kind of work, and that's why I said he only took people on midlife, this kind of inquiry is when you have accomplished certain things and you are ready to inquire more, what is my purpose? Or what are the things that are self-defeating that I keep doing? I understand that. Uh, it's beautiful. And uh, I guess people could just listen to what you said over here. Uh, <laughs> but if, if, if they do want to learn some of the things that you mentioned, I, I know that you're booked. Is there, you know, is there a book you recommend? Is there something specific that well, I could... Yeah, the, the 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 book that I recommend is what you had. It's a little bit dense because it's meant originally was meant for therapists. Hmm. So you have to have deep interest in us. I call psychobabble to really go along. You know, such such stuff. The other one, uh, if you are in midlife and again interested, curious about psychology because it's also dense and you have to persist is James Hollis's H-O-L-L-I-S book called From Misery to Meaning, The Middle Passage. Actually, it's called Middle Passage from Misery to Meaning, explaining a little bit of what I just explained about all that come to our awareness when we feel that we have been defeated and how to climb out of it. But both are, you know, you need a lot of patience, but those are healing books for me as opposed to somebody else's um, personal experience of how they smartened up and this is what you need to do. Hallelujah, I'm glad it helped you. Thank you for sharing and inspiring us that if I figure it out, I can do it too. Amazing, so, so really, really beautiful. And I'll just end with one last question. I wonder your answer sure. for that. Uh, I believe that in life, you know, there are many things we could uh, do and invest in ourselves in order to see that beauty that is in ourselves. But what do you think is the main investment that a person uh, needs to do? That way they'll be able to see more of the beauty that is in them. For me, it's just being in communication with your soul, it will guide you. And I'm not even going to bring in a, a totally unrelated attitude that as I age, I'm carrying that it's kind of has been, I, I'm going to say it very quickly and then forget about it has been predetermined your soul needs to knows exactly what you need to do so all you have to do is listen without and you know probably get there with daily meditation and ask two questions what is it that i how can i express my highest call today what is it that i need to do and then the rest will fall in place wow said really beautiful marianne i really appreciate your time you gave your great value and i think you know i'm a big believer that you know sometimes people can hear something like this and say okay let's do a b c d and take all these different steps personally i believe wait stop you know <laughs> focus on one thing that that you know that you learned or i learned for, from the conversation and do that and then the second and then the third uh, otherwise when you take uh too much at one time Usually nothing gets done or it gets done, but just for a little while. So. And by the way, the, the, the gift of COVID is that you can do therapy online. So if anybody's interested in this modality called IFS therapy, they can reach out to you and I will give you a website where you can locate an IFS therapist. The problem is they charge American, you know, 
dollars and oh, all also you know yeah it's not coupon holding prices so it's you have good. to be yeah but you you need to be aware but if if for some reason you know life gifted you with some income that allows you to spend it um freely i invite you sure. to consider ifs therapy or internal family system therapy as a way uh to get you to your healing place for sure. So maybe later you'll send me the link. I'll put the, the link below. Whoever wants, you know, people watch it from all over the world. So uh, whoever has okay. that, op that option, uh, for sure, they could uh, they could click and go and uh, you know get some great healing and see the gift that is in them. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate you and all. The My value pleasure. Value Thank you for well. inviting me. For sure, and uh, we will be in touch. Yeah. Okay. Uh, bye bye. Have a great day. Bye -bye. You too. Bye -bye. I hope you enjoyed the video and you got some tools to overcome your challenges and light your path. For us to help other people, please press that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget that the most amazing things in life are the one you take for granted.